So where has it come from? It's come from eight years of just printing money. And the issue is that that money was not matched by productivity. It's not like when you earn dollars and you bring water alongside it, although there's even a better way than that. But that's still not as bad. It's not as if you, the, 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 the money is matched by productivity, increase in output. It is not. And what happened was that for eight years, the, the, the weak were left to their own devices. It is the privileged few that took everything. That's the reality. So that money supply must be sucked back out to balance the economy. It's not just lifting of subsidy here or, or margin of rates there, no. It is a strategic plan. The whole fiscal side, the government's finances have been repaired. Even today, you distinguished senators have helped further to encourage and involve the executive to further repair the finances, the fiscal situation of this country by endorsing and urging us to do something about the leakages in the import duty uh, waiver system. Well, as the Minister of Finance and the Coordinating Minister of the Economy, while they are done speaking about uh, why the economy is where it is at the moment, and uh, we're joined this morning by a former presidential aide, Laura Kondi. Good morning. Thank you for coming on today. Good morning. Good to see you again. Well, you know, listening to that, it just leaves several people, because, I mean, they've heard the similar narrative previously in mm. terms of what went down before and why... We are at this point in time in the history of our lives with the economy. And many usually wonder how on earth could that have even happened? Many, yes, disappointed. But talk to us a little bit about that. I mean, does that, that doesn't sound, does that sound, how do you respond when you hear that, look, this is what was going on all the while for eight years, not even four, eight years? Well, I mean, I, um, there, there are two things, you know, uh, to try and see understand how this happened and of course uh, to try and see what else ought to be done especially mm. in the circumstances that we had so so what happened you know in, in the last eight years uh, I, th I think fairly everybody in this country uh, has been gripped by shock at the level of um, uh, you know uh, they call it uh, uh, ways and means uh, uh, you know, last the yeah. central bank is the uh, lender of Over the last resource trillion. to to the to the to the, to the federal government. So so there is a normal expectation that when they have to do it, but the scale and uh, the, the 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 quantity of of its usage uh, seems to be what is really shocking. And clearly, um, you know, I mean, like I said, everybody has been uh, hmm. shocked about it. So my point is that look. We must ensure that this does not happen again. It's the only uh, way to understand this. Now, the current administration, in my mind, correctly, is saying that, look, this explains what you have. You have so much printed of money that, is not, uh, 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 that does not correlate with any kind of productive activity. And so you're going to have this kind of uh, hyperinflation, like you said, and, and the, the, the incessant, I mean, the attendant hardship. So my point is that, what are we going to do to make sure that this does not happen again? And I'm concerned that in the past we've seen this kind of stuff, the rhetoric will come up, and then there is no consequence. There must be consequence. You know, everyone that is involved in this calamity, which is what it is, an economic calamity, they must be made to answer in court we don't want a situation where we just hear, we just hear that, oh, the case has, is, has died. It is going to repeat itself. We have to stop the impunity. And that's, that's, that's the first point. My second point is that, so what is the current government going to do? You know, so, so we're not going to be able to just uh, uh, complain. Legitimate complain, by the way. But we must go beyond that. And so we have to take the issue of the, 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 the fiscal policy very seriously. And that's an important point that I wanted to make. In November, 
this is this is March now. In November, yeah. there was an emergency economic intervention bill mm -hmm. that I think rose out from the Oyedele tax reform. Okay, now how many months from November now? November to December, December to January, January to February. Three months now. Where is the bill? Where is the bill? Because we need to talk about how are we going to be raising money. We all know that in this country, taxation is so low. And this, I mean, what the Delays Committee has, has been doing, to the credit of the president, is to try and see how that it can be reformed. In November, a bill was supposed to be discussed. In fact, we are in March. Where is the bill? So, so we need a sense of urgency. These things have to be done in, 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 in good time. And, and that is how we show that we are serious about these things and we are proactive. You know, I haven't uh, at least, you know, had media stint in, in the last government. Were you surprised, disappointed, or you just kind of suspect that this kind of thing might be going on? Well, I, I mean, we, 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 we had our, uh, our fears uh, about the, the, the misbehavior of the uh, monetary institution. Clearly, you know, there was nobody in the administration that didn't have an idea of you know how things were going, the shoddiness, the sloppiness, the lack of patriotism, and the mm. fear of scandals like this. But I don't even think that I had an idea that it was this terrible, you know. Uh, and, and there were several times. I mean, the the, the 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 one that we all felt was really really outrageous was the was the arbitrage that 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 uh, that existed between uh, the the official rate and the parallel market. That was so huge, and you know I could tell. You know, anybody could tell that a lot of people were making a killing, you know, just changing money, taking the money from the official rate and taking it to the mm. black market and yeah. making a huge... And that was one of my own most uh, uh, yeah. serious concerns. But I didn't even know that okay. this uh, Wilson means was this... There was something, was... though, at the time that the president was away and the VP was acting, at some point, the Naira seemed to stabilize against the dollar. Yeah. So what was it that happened at the time? How come it wasn't weakening, like when the president was there? Well, the I, I think it was, uh, this must be sometimes in 2017, if I'm correct, or 2018, I'm not very clear. So, so Nera got into 500, and um, uh, the acting president was in place. And I think, you know, uh, one of the things that happened, you know, and, and I'm not the economist in the, in the place, by the way, but I, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, I could uh, observe a few things. I think one of the things that happened was that first, you know, we had um, enough, uh, 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 the, 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 we had the uh, euro bond, you know, which was, uh, you know, oversubscribed at that time, which meant, you know, a lot more uh, capital importation, you know, into the country. And I also think that there, were, there, there was some kind of truth telling, you know, uh, about what what, what, what the, the kind of excesses that had to be copped, you know, at, at several levels of government. And, and ultimately, within the time, uh, the thing came back from 500 to about 380. The point is that, look, if, if you are willing to, and then I, I think, of course, the, even the arbitrage was trying you know, try to tighten it at that time. If, if, if you do what is right over time, you know, these things are not rocket science. Look at what is happening already. Already, you know, uh, we have seen an, an increase in the foreign reserves, and we, we are beginning to see some stability even in, in, in the rates. Because, you know, uh, I think Cardoso seems to have his, 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 his high on the ball in, in the right way. But we have to deal on the fiscal side. You know, that's my point. What are we going to do? How serious, how, how, how urgent should we treat the question of sorting out the fiscal side? If we can sort out the fiscal side and we have enough money to spend, some of these problems will begin uh, to disappear. Was it possible for someone to be printing Naira notes for eight years without the National Economic Council knowing about it? Because this accusation from Mr. Walid is very direct. Free, free printing of Naira notes for eight years under the past administration that went into the hands of a privileged few without corresponding productivity. Very direct accusation. Yeah. Now you have alluded to the fact that yes, you had some idea, you didn't know how bad it was. But with the National Economic Council in place, and you were basically at every yeah. National Economic Council meeting during the last administration, did this come up at all? Well, you know, um, I, I don't remember it coming up as uh, as as as, a, as an item on the agenda specifically. 
you know, uh, don't forget that the National Economic Council is an advisory uh, body to the president. Okay, so uh, it, it, it cannot mandate the president. But to your point, the Central Bank Governor is a member of the National, National Economic Council, Council yes. uh, uh, and he never, you know, nor the Finance Minister, to my uh, recollection, uh, discuss, you know, this in in a way that. Uh, uh, well, we, based on what we have seen, we've not, we, I mean, certainly there was no National Economic Council meeting where, you know, uh, they said that, oh, this is about 30 trillion or so. You know, certainly I can tell you that certainly that did not happen, uh, although it doesn't seem to have happened in, in, in one, one full strike. But I don't recollect any meeting of, of NEC. Uh, you know, talking about uh, these things. I don't recall it. On whose authority was he printing all this money? Well, you know, you, you, we have to ask him. <laughs> he, he can, yeah. I said the CBN governor can randomly be printing money and no, no, that, that's what I'm saying. Not, that's not what I'm saying. Okay, maybe the other point I didn't make is that, so the Sarabha governor is a member of the National Economic Council, but the Sarabha governor also has direct access to the president. It's possible for the Senate Bank Governor to go well, to the President that's and what approval in without Senate, being aware of anything. Now that's that matter possible. is being investigated now. Yeah. So the Senate have said, look, they're going to investigate that 30 trillion to find out what exactly happened. Mm. Was he printing without authorization? Did he get clearance? So all of that they're going to look into. But give us inside source. Were the governors buying dollars after getting fucked? <laughs> that's the big problem, you know. Uh, you know, and, and this was this is one of the ways in which I I, I think the naira uh, uh, is is often depreciated. You know, maybe not all the governors do it, but there is a significant amount of numbers number of governors who will take part of their fact, the the the, 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 the week they collect it, and go to the BDCs. This is just a fact. It's, it's an open secret. So they just mop up all the dollars. You know, so, so, so that affected, you know, the depreciation of Naira and, and the consequences that follow suit. You know, so, so, and, and some of the things that we are saying is that it's important for Mr. President to call the governors into order. Their argument, some of the governors, is that, oh, well, a lot, some of our projects are also dollar denominated and therefore we need some dollars. But, but clearly, there are a lot of excesses in that particular behavior. And I hope that, you know, uh, the, 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 the Nigerian people can begin to insist on the governors behaving properly. If governors in this country behave properly, I'm telling you that half of our problem will be sorted out. The governors were part <coughs> of the National Economic Council as well. It's actually their committee. It's, it's actually their, it's committee. Actually their, their yeah. committee. Yeah. So they were taking facts. Just so Nigerians can understand what you're... Many governors, not all of them. Right. They were taking the money that was allocated to the state and then they'll go to BDCs and change it to... Well, well fact is different from... Uh, from NEC. So, so the people that go to the FARC Federal Allocation Committee meeting are the I mean, commissioners of finance, and that is different from NEC. NEC is where the governors themselves sit down. Okay, so, so there is no, it, it's not that, and, and it's, it's essentially a, a, a place to just sit down, that's fact, to just say, okay, uh, the commission says that federal government gets 53%, the state government gets this, you know, and this is how much we have this month, and this is how we're going to uh, distribute it. That's what FARC does. It's after the FARC, when they have collected the Naira, that some of the governors will go and change part of it, significant portion of it, into dollars. Wow. You know, which is which, which is a big problem in this country. I guess we'll find a way to look out and see if we could uh, just see if we could catch some on camera or <laughs> somehow just see how some of these things go. I know it's not going to be easy, quite all right. I'll be an insider. But, <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's the idea. <laughs> but the other part, the Senate, uh, they also the different House of Reps too concerned about security uh, yesterday as well. So they thought mm. that. Look, they have to meet with the president about the security or insecurity is deteriorating. They think a lot more needs to be done about all of this. We also do know that the last time, former president did speak about it several times, but I think the people are divided as to whether or not it had the kind of impact. Of course, a lot of people thought, no, they didn't see the kind of impact that they expected in spite of the president's express directive to security agencies. What do you think about that? Well... I, I, I think that, first, it is um, encouraging that the National Assembly is taking this kind of stance. I, I think it's quite encouraging that you have them say, look, this thing is a big problem. The problem is not going away. It's becoming, uh, uh, it's even becoming more there. So it's good that you have the Senate. And I think the House of Representatives saying that, look, some of us have to go and sit down with the president. Now, but beyond that, we must understand that the problem of insecurity in this country, like we have said over and over again, is really, really deep. 
is really, really deep. You've heard from senators, you've heard from former ministers, you've heard... Uh, service chiefs have appeared chief. before the Senate. Yeah, yeah. you know, so, so it's, there's a lot of conversation that is going on around it. And, and over the years, and we haven't seen any really compelling change. So I suspect that this is something uh, that is going to take far more than we already uh, imagined. But <laughs> I'm sorry to say, everything, the, the box stops at the president's desk. People have spoken about collusion. You know, look, I mean, uh, one, of the, one of the things that I find very compelling, Dr. Issa Pentami uh, was the Minister for Digital Economy and Communications in the past administration. And when you had the FCT uh, uh, kidnapping, you know, those guys went into his, uh, uh, an estate, kidnapped a family. You know, Dr. Pantami, you know, I think he's, he's, he's probably his relative or, or connected, you know, had to get involved in raising money to pay the ransom. And one of the things that he said in his tweet, right now, ex Andrew, is that, look, the security agencies don't use the, the, the data, the, the NIN data, that is in the Ministry of Communication to track. So did it suggest they were not using it when he was in government? Well, I guess, you know. That, so what that, did they do about it? So, 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 and so, 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 so my point is that, so you have a minister, a former minister. So this guy, you, 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 you can't put down Dr. Issa and say he, he doesn't know what he's saying. The guy was minister. He said on his Twitter, and I, I even saw him at an event, I said, that did I say, I said yes that security agencies are not using it. So, so you have a situation where there is tremendous uh, uh, silos of pressure. Everybody is just doing their own thing. I mean, mm. some, of the, some, some senators have also said that, uh, uh, that look at the issue of oil theft, that, that oh, well, Navy said at some point that, well, look, we don't know what NNPC is doing. And so even though we are head there on the seas, we don't know what an LP is doing, so our assets are not available. You know, all, all kinds of very discordant views. Mr. President is the one that must rein in and say no more. It's a very tough call, and honestly, nobody should help with the president. But look, there are deeper problems in that security that if we don't have a courageous leadership attitude to say that, look, this thing cannot continue this way, there must be a drastic change. And I'll, I'll, I'll make this point. One of, the, one of the job of Mr. President, whoever is president, is that, look, you must, your, your strongest point, your, one of your strongest uh, uh, weapons is to hire and fire. You must be able to know when somebody or uh, people in place are not delivering because there are people who will deliver. Look, there are people in this country, there are people in the security agencies who can solve this problem. I have no doubt about that. And so if, 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 if you are in place, the president should say, I give you six months. And you say, okay, Mr. President, can you make it nine months? That's the kind of interaction that we must have so that people will know that they have to deliver. If they are compelled to deliver, they will deliver. They will come out and say, this is the problem. And it's getting to that point in this country today that this kind of discussions, this kind of conversation, these are very frank conversations have to be happening. Well, um, you know, Mr. Thank you, Chairman. Well, Mr. Conde, you, you, you rightly put, but then there are those who would also be quick to remind you that the president does not have authority over the state governors. And I'm glad that you already laid some responsibilities at the feet of the governors. Now, the Senate wants to meet the president on these security concerns. The senators represent states. They can, you know, have conversations with their state governors. A number of people have said all security concerns are primarily local. It's in the locals that people are killed, that things are raced down. I saw the response of the governor of Ibom State, I think, yesterday on the news at 10. And it was given a marching order. You local administrators, you know you are not elected. You are just administrators. If you do not do this, if I hear this again, I'm going to remove you. He already made that clear. But the president cannot say that to any governor. So I'm glad that you also mentioned the fact that the governors have a responsibility. Many times when we talk about security and we talk about the president, sincerely, something in me is saying, look, 
Are we neglecting the fact that the governors collect security votes, which someone said runs into billions, and they are supposed to do something in their localities? How do you respond to such a, to such a thing? Yeah, so, so uh, I, I don't think we, we should expect the president to, uh, uh, you know, order the governors around, you know, especially on, on, on matters, you know, for which they are constitutionally responsible. So we have to separate it. But even then, the president does have a bully pulpit. Let me tell you, if the president were to call a governor or some governors, and tell them in an informal discussion that, look, this, 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 this has to stop. There will be very few governors who will be willing to go against the president. So, so the, the, the influence of the president is gargantuan. It's huge, especially in the continent of Nigeria. But I'm not saying that, you know, I agree with you entirely that there are constitutional limitations. Now, talking about the state... I think one of the credits that we must give to the president and many of the governors is that, look, and, and even, you know, a, a lot of uh, uh, stakeholders is that we have, we, have, we, have, we, have, we, have, we have come around to say that, look, let's do state police. So, so let's hope that that conversation we, we move quickly so that the mm. states can become more, uh, be, will be held responsible for the security of their state entirely. And you are right. There's a lot of security votes that goes to the governors, you know, uh, but... In their, in their defense, in, in many of the states, uh, the state's governments are the ones that are funding the purchase of vehicles for the police uh, and, and, and several other equipment. You know, we, we can't deny them that. What is missing is that, look, the state governor ought to have the final say on the police in a state. And I think that's one of the things that the state police will do for us even though we also have to worry about how that is not abused. Very important. But at least well, when we move to state police, the state mm -hmm. governor will not be able to say that, oh, I have to, I have to call the high G. Mm -hmm. You know, the state governor will be able to sort out uh, the problems by himself. Okay, well, Mr. Akonde, one of the things that a number of people have also said, some experts have said, can help to solve the security problem is to deal with the pro poverty problem deal with the economic challenges that people are having, stabilize lives for them. Many of the uh, insecurity issues we have are largely economic crimes, as uh, Mr. Frank Mba once put it, economic crimes. So it's only because it is poverty. You know, many of these things are poverty-induced. And I go back to the states, because if we get it right, I feel that if we get it right at the states' levels, it would be very minimal that the president or the federal government would really have to do other than supervisory and all those things. So in terms of alleviating some of the poverty issues that evoke economic crimes, what gaps do we need to fill? Just yesterday, even this morning, we still saw that headline uh, that uh, this morning that the UN says that 200 people confirming that 200 women IDPs you know, have already been, you know, something has happened to them confirming that that thing indeed occurs. So, please, what, do, what gaps do the governors need to fill in that area of economic challenges in their various states? Very, very, very important question. Uh, a lot of resources have been going to the governors, especially since after June, uh, with the, quote unquote, you know, uh, removal of the, of the subsidy and the, uh, the, 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 the devaluation of the Naira. So, so there is more Naira in the hands of the governors than before. I'm not sure of what percentage, but a significant increase has come to the governors as a result of those two, important, uh, those two critical policies. You know, so we need to hold the governors more accountable if they are not ameliorating the, 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 the hardship in their states. You, you are entirely right. Some of them have done very well. Look at um, uh, uh, Governor McIdeo for your state. You know, he said that, look, I'm going to suspend uh, any taxation on uh, agricultural produce. That is good. You know, more like that. But in terms of providing uh, immediate succor, to the people, we must hold the governors more responsible because now they have more cash. They have significant more cash to be able to touch the life of the people. So I, I agree with you entirely that, look, we, we shouldn't be focusing only on the federal government. 
we should be paying even closer attention to what happened I in the states. That, uh, many of those governors can give 24 hours uninterrupted power supply. There'll be a question. Yeah, because, because, because if Abia happened. State can do it, why can't state to have more resources even do it? It takes three years, as we're told by Professor Bart, and we'll drum it home at any time we do have. So thank Very you true. for for coming on this morning, Lalo. Well, we'll